Alrighty. Our notes today are going to be titled Biodiversity. Yes, this is the biodiversity notes. Yes, can everyone see dark purple? Okay. I do, I do, I do. Fancy. Thank you. <laughs> Captain Neighbor say she the bomb. Well Ma'am, hair baby. All right. One word that we're going to come across in this is biosphere. So let's review what this word means. What is biosphere, Shania? It's the sum of all life on Earth. Are we good? Yeah. All right. And then we have this title, Biodiversity. What is biodiversity? Someone other than Shania. You break down those two words. We have bio and we have diversity. What does that mean? I'm going to make this here. It's... Um, how all the, all the animals or species are each different from one another. Okay, something like that. Luis? It's like, um, like biology and life and all the other diversity means like, um, like different, like different life. A variety? Yeah. Okay, so put it all together. A variety of life. A variety of life, okay. Variety of species. We're going to say... A variety, I'm going to use that word that you all use, of characteristics a variety of characteristics of many ecosystems and you all should be with me because I'm writing with you on earth that make sense? So basically it's a diversity of life. But we don't want to use the word diversity again in the definition, but you know that diversity means variety, so it's a variety of life. Where does life exist? In ecosystems. So let's break down the word ecosystems. Let me get another color marker. What's an ecosystem? Someone other than Kyle, Shania, or um, Isaiah and Pudi. Let's say you. A whole bunch of? What's another word? You got a, a lot of. Well, yeah, a variety, but when you have these organisms together, they come together as they what? Um, we are considered a high school. Community, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so let's say a community. Question? Okay. A community of, you said a whole bunch of different what? Organisms. Question, Luis. Why do you keep raising your hand? Because I was going to add something, but they already Okay, a community of. Organisms doing what? But when they live, then he just like, oh, I'm just going to chill here. And living and surviving is all doing what, though? Right now I'm teaching you, you're learning, you're asking me questions, I'm answering them, I'm asking you questions. Interacting. You're interacting. 
So community organisms interacting with one another. Only at interacting with one another and other ecosystems and their environment. <laughs> Any questions? All right, on the next, I'm not on my next page, I'm going to go to the next page only because I don't have room. You keep writing. We are going to, just in a moment, we're going to draw an ecosystem, but let's get some examples. Some examples of an ecosystem could be a desert. It could be a forest. What else? A tundra. Grasslands. Grasslands. You keep writing. What else? Wetlands. Or um, like river banks or banks of a pond, water areas. Um, you could also have even... Yard gardens, the garden that's in your backyard or in your front yard, that's an ecosystem. You were a little young man, you ever went in there and dug for worms and saw different bugs and flies came about and birds came in and out, that's an ecosystem. It's still a, a, a small ecosystem. A lake. Yes, that's wetlands here. Yes. Yeah. All right, so let's move um, on. You keep writing. I'm going to move to the next page because, again, I'm going to be drawing along with you. All right, so we're going to start off our drawing with the pond. Don't draw it too big because you need to fit um, some notes still. But I'm going to start off by drawing. I'm going to draw mine a little big so you can see it. This is my pond, and I'm going to label it. But I'm also going to put some ripples in it just so that you know that it's water. In a pond, there probably are some tadpoles. And you can label it, but these are my tadpoles. And, and don't get jealous about my artistic ability because I'm an artist and I'm you know, sensitive about my work. Um, if there's tadpoles, there obviously must have been a what? Oh. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Here goes my crawl. Let me see. Here goes the eye sockets. What? Don't 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 criticize me now. It's a frog that's sitting down like this. Here's his other arm. <laughs> this is the back leg. You can't see the other leg hind in there because it's bent. I'm going to draw the eyes. Don't worry. Oh, oh, you're asking me, can you just draw something else? Because you can't draw a frog. No, I was going to say, can I just draw a frog? Oh, man. It's a frog. So, and I'm going to give my frog some dimensions. So it's my frog is leaning over. So that's my frog. Uh, you draw a frog, but you apparently you can't draw a frog, which is why you criticize the month. Sure, because you can't draw. So we have our frog, we have our tadpoles, and our pond. We probably have some fish. If we have frogs, frogs have to eat, so what do they eat? Flies. We got some flies. <laughs> Around our pond, we um, have grass. Even grass grows out of our pond, so we have water plants. Algae? 
gets probably some algae down around the sides of it. We definitely, definitely, it's the daytime, so we definitely need a sun. I'm also going to draw a snail. I'm a snail. There's probably a turtle in there, but this is just an example of a wetland um, ecosystem. Any questions about this? All right. Some other things that we want to write underneath our notes here, and I'll write in dark green. Uh, actually, I'll put it in blue. What is that bean looking thing right here? This? Yeah. It's a, a fly. <laughs> so our ecosystems, they contain... A unique assortment of species. Yep. I'm going to scroll this page up a little bit so that I can still write. One other thing we want to put under our picture is the species are going to vary. They're going to vary in number and how closely or distantly related. For instance, our frog and our tadpole, they're related. The tadpoles grow into being frogs. However, our frog and our fish are distantly related, but somehow they still have some similar relationships because they come from the same ecosystem. So although they do not look alike, although they do not act alike, Maybe there's some similarities in gathering food or where they live. Those are the things that we're talking about. Any questions with this? No? All right, you can put your pens down for a second. We're going to look at some pictures of some organisms. And with these organism pictures, you are going to tell me some characteristics of these organisms. Starting with this one. Jante, give me a characteristic of this organism. Jante. Give me character. Um, I said Jante. Hi. Huh? It's camouflage. What else? Small. Small. Thin. What color is it? Don't tell me color. A characteristic brown. is it's brown. How do you think these characteristics helps it to survive in its environment? Tonight. It's able to hide from predators. We have the antennas here, the legs here, and this is the body. It kind of looks like a leaf. Tell me, does it look like any other organism? No. A leaf. A leaf is an organism. <laughs> this is the animal. All of these is the animal. These are his legs. And this is also part of the animal. All of this is the animal. Yeah, it's part of leaf bug. It's not an animal in a leaf. It's only an animal, but it's part of leaf bug. All right. With that being said, one organism that it is similar to is a leaf. It's probably also similar to a stick bug. There's bugs that look like sticks. Let's look at our next one. Characteristic. It's blue. Pretty. Colorful. Pretty is an inference. If this thing come running towards me, I probably won't be like, oh, pretty. <laughs> um, just so you know, this is a male. This is the female. 
The males are the ones with the beautiful colors. It's kind of their way of saying, look at all my bling. I'm hot. So what about the female? The female doesn't have beautiful feathers because she's not the one that they're attracted to. You know, men are thirsty. They are going to be attracted to any other female. So they have to. But the man has, and women are picky. Women are picky. So us, the, the peacock ladies don't need to have anything of attraction. All she needs to be is a lady. The gentlemen have to be able to flaunt their feathers so that the woman be like, oh, you're kind of cute. Because he's like, oh, we need to mate, and you need to mate with me. I got to diversify my population of my last name, peacock number 31. All right. Um, so what of the characteristics of this peacock may help it to um, survive in its environment? The pretty colors. The pretty colors so that it can grow its population, right? All right. Um, what animal is it maybe similar to? Does it have any characteristics that are similar? Don't just look at the feather. you got to dig a little deeper. Flamingo. Flamingo is tall. It's not even pink. Okay, I'm going to go over to Luis because he sounded like he had something intelligent to say. Luis. A parrot. You know the one that Okay, stop yelling out. No. A parrot, maybe. A quail, maybe. A whale. No, I don't think she did. All right, I said a quail. All right. What about this? No, don't no, tell me what it is. Characteristics. It's not a boat. It's camouflage, yes. It's in the water right now. It looks a little bit clear through. It is not a seahorse, but it looks like it can be related to a seahorse. All right. That's a mole rat. It's not a mole rat. It looks like it could be related to one. What are some characteristics of this organism that would help it survive in its environment? The long claw. What is the purpose of the, this? Is, this is the eye. This is the mouth area. And we open up, it kind of looks like, oh, it's and disgusting. Um, let's stay, to stay on task. What are some things about this organism um, that may be similar to another organism? The claws. The, claws. the little eyes, the color, maybe the furriness of it. Again, if this came running, even like an op opossum. Um, what is the purpose of looking at these animals and making, showing, looking at the similarities or the differences of other organisms? Uh, what's that connectiveness that we've been talking about? Evolution. So let's move on. There's another one. That's not a lemur, though. All right. Let's move on. We're going to look at types of biodiversity. I mean parts of it, types, goodness gracious. Listening to, um, Mike, I can, but I have to do it another way. Yeah, types of biodiversity, that's what we're going to look at. So write that down, types of biodiversity. Ecosystem diversity. Ooh, that really 
remember diversity is a multitude of characteristics or a variety of characteristics of organisms um, on Earth. So looking at an ecosystem um, diversity, we're going to look at a variety of habitats. Why does my pen keep sliding out of here? Goodness gracious, that's what say variety of, I don't know why it's doing this, habitat. It takes a lot to do that. All right, so a variety of habitats. It's also a variety of communities. And ecological. Why don't I get over here? That's crazy. Let's just say ecological processes in a biosphere. Ecological are the different things that happen for life to survive within that biosphere, whether it's collecting food, whether it's um, getting rid of waste, um, mating, different things of that nature. Another is species diversity. This special mic What? This is the number of species. <clears throat> and actually, it's just a different species. Okay. The number of different species in an area. or biosphere. Now we need to get these notes in here because we will be doing a lab activity that's going to have you rely on these notes. The last is genetic diversity. This is the total of all genetic material carried in living things. Good? Yeah. You all should be caught up with me because I'm writing at the same time as you. Yeah. And we have a couple other things to write and then we'll be done. Yeah. Can I move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give me one second because I need to add another page. Hopefully I can write on a straight line. Let's see. Oh, no, I doubt it too, but we're going to make it work. <laughs> All right, here we go. Our next portion that we're going to look at, we're going to look at conserving biodiversity. What does it mean to conserve? To save. I'm going to split the screen because I'm going to cover two things. I want to put two things on this page. On the other half of the screen, I'm going to put threats to biodiversity. 
or biodiversity threats? Not really, just splitting the screen. Biodiversity. Whoa, what does that say? What is that? It's supposed to say biodiversity, but as we get to this portion of the screen, it gets a little bit crazy. Um, biodiversity threats. It's because my hand is blocking the signal. Biodiversity threats. All right. With the um, conserving biodiversity, there are three points. One is protecting species. Some examples would be the zoo, the aquarium, These places oversee a survival plan. The second way of conserving biodiversity is protecting habitats and ecosystems. One of the major things that is here is uh, ecological hotspots. What eco? Ugh, I can't talk. What they are is place where, and I'm going to abbreviate, but significant. Let me hear one's caught up. This is a place where a significant number of habitats and species. <coughs> I'll let you get caught up. It's a hot spot, so it's being looked at. Our in immediate danger. So these are areas that are focused on because these organisms are in immediate danger. And then lastly, developing plans. And these are to developing plans to replace harmful activities. Any questions about conserving biodiversity? All right, we're almost done. Get my blue pen back. Are we good? No. I'm going to move over here. What's in the way? Oh, sorry. All right, so this was biodiversity threats. One of the things here is developments. When, when we build up and we make buildings and schools and things that we still need, these developments do things. So the developments, I'm going to, you keep writing right here, but I'm actually going to go to the next page so that I can write over here. Development. What's wrong? Okay. These developments split ecosystems. What do I mean by split ecosystems? 
They break them apart. It's like if we were to come in and put a building right in between you all. Now, we're all part of one ecosystem, but now it splits you from them. Little bunny Fufu can no longer get to his children. It's in a different uh, habitat or becomes a different habitat for them. Um, so it splits it into pieces. This is called habitat fragmentation. This is the equal sign. The splitting of ecosystems. This is a problem. Why? It could because now species survival is at risk. What if it's an area where there's a pride and that lion is the one that protects or the animals that are responsible for getting food? Now there's going to be a problem with starvation. And then lastly, um, this would be things that we do like hunting, pollution, Climate change. And one other thing that we don't think about, but introducing new species. They could bring diseases, or they could be predators to the species that already lived there. Are we good with that? Yeah. All right, don't put your pen down. We got one more sentence to write, and that's it. All right, are we good writing this? Okay, no? All right, give about 30 more seconds. Yeah. All right. And then our last one, this is called biodiversity. I can't spell. Diversity benefits to humans. Some of the benefits would be medicine, definitely food, agriculture. Clothing, good, you can add that. Um, that will be under, I believe, agriculture probably. Eco well, this will be under ecological goods and um, services. That covers just about everything. Ecological goods and service. Any questions? All right, then I'm going to pass your homework out to you. You will need your notes to do your homework. I'm glad that you've been waiting. Go ahead and get your um start your homework.